Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. This is a topic I've talked about before, but I have some new information that adds to what I've already created on this topic. And, um, and, I, and because coronary artery disease is so common and we have so much of the population, such a high percentage of the population interacting with cardiologists right now, I think it's important to talk about this. Well, according to a new study, carotid imaging in asymptomatic patients is not warranted 95% of the time. I'll insert here that previous studies have shown this too. Lead researcher Salome Kayani says that carotid imaging was identified as being of low value by physicians participating in the Choose, Choosing Wisely campaign, yet the test is still widely used. As an aside, the Choosing Wisely campaign is a, um, a consortium of medical organizations. They got together and said, let's come up with lists of things that we just shouldn't be doing so much of in medicine, and let's, let's lower costs and stop hurting people by um, not doing so much of this stuff. Well, well, anyway, I um, did a video clip last year on some follow-up information for the Choosing Wisely campaign. It's been completely ineffective, by the way. Um, all of the things that are on the list to not do so much of, use of those have actually gone up instead of down, which is not the intended um, uh, outcome. Well, anyway, this gal and her researchers wanted to investigate why so many people were being screened in spite of the fact that so much evidence shows that they shouldn't be. So the group reviewed records for 4,127 asymptomatic veterans administration patients who were age 65 or older and who had undergone carotid revascularization for asymptomatic carotid stenosis. Now there were several inappropriate reasons for the test which included dizziness, vertigo, and syncope. According to the current guidelines, these indications are not valid reasons for carotid imaging. Performing procedures in response to tests that are not justified means that there's going to be overtreatment, and that's what happened with these people. 83% of the patients had a carotid endarterectomy, and 663 procedures were performed in patients age 80 and older. One interesting consideration in this study was that because this was Veterans Administration, there was no financial incentive for the physicians who ordered the tests and procedures. We know that financial incentives in the private sector motivate some of this stuff. Well, instead, Dr. Kayani says, the current culture of medicine is more likely responsible. American doctors use all types of tests, and they order too many of them, with the belief that no stone should be left unturned in the hunt for abnormalities. An additional complicating factor, says Kayani, is that there are several sets of recommendations concerning carotid screening in asymptomatic patients due to the lack of hard evidence for screening or against screening. The U.S. Preventive Services Task Force advises against it, while the American Heart Association says it's a good idea. Well, what this means is that clinical judgment is involved in decision making, and there just isn't a whole lot of that going on in medicine today. Therefore, Kayana says, we need to have some specific guidelines. And the problem here is that no matter how specific the guidelines get, somebody has to make a judgment call. And we've tried to purge all clinical judgment from medical practice. And I think it's one of the reasons why the quality of medical care in this country has gone down so much. Well, the goal of imaging is to identify patients who are candidates for carotid revascularization. The procedure is overprescribed and it's performed so often in people who are too old or too sick to benefit. According to the existing guidelines, patients should have a life expectancy of at least five years in order to qualify. And the reason is that the risk of stroke as a result of the procedure itself is quite high. In older and very sick patients who have a short life expectancy, there is no benefit from the imaging or the procedures that tend to follow. Kayani reported that, quote, in our study, we found that about a quarter of patients did not live five years after revascularization, so obviously this is not being assessed correctly. Guidelines on screening should include consideration of whether a patient is suitable for revascularization or not. But I'll add to this, guidelines on screening and guidelines on everything, as is evidenced by the Choosing Wisely campaign, don't seem to help. Doctors aren't reading this stuff, and it doesn't seem to change their behavior. Larry Goldstein, medical doctor, commented on this. He says the problem is even bigger than the study shows because this study only involved patients who had undergone carotid revascularization. 
the percentage of patients undergoing inappropriate and unjustified screening is likely much higher when factoring in those patients who didn't have follow-up procedures. He says there's uncertainty as to the benefit of performing procedures on asymptomatic patients with stenosis, calling into question the wisdom of current practices. He adds that in view of so much uncertainty, doctors should be much more conservative in their approach to screening and interventions. David Spence, a medical doctor from the Stroke Prevention and Atherosclerosis Research Center in London, Ontario, expressed concern about the fact that 83% of the patients underwent endarterectomy. He says 90% of patients with carotid stenosis would be better off with intensive medical therapy, and the few who could benefit from inter by some type of intervention, we can find out about those by using ultrasound and, and, um, and transcranial Doppler. He says carotid imaging should be done for the purpose of enhancing medical management of atherosclerosis, not for the purpose of finding victims for inappropriate carotid endarterectomy or stenting. Spence was involved in another study, which, and, and I covered this, but I incorporated it here so you can kind of see the breadth of the problem. The evidence just keeps stacking up and up and up against doing this, but we keep doing it anyway. Well, Spence was involved in another study in which researchers looked at the same issue. Carotid scans and outcomes data were reviewed for almost 3,700 patients who were asymptomatic and had carotid stenosis. They were patients of a, an atherosclerosis uh, clinic during a 20-year period. Of the 316 patients who progressed to carotid occlusion, only one had a stroke at the time of the occlusion, and only three had a stroke in two and a half years of follow-up. So there's just not a high risk of bad things happening. The risk of stroke is much higher for people who undergo the procedures. The CREST trials showed that. In this study, asymptomatic patients having carotid stenting had a 2.5% risk for stroke or death. Those who had done dartorectomy had a 1.4% risk of stroke or death in the 30 days following the procedure. So there was higher risk from the procedure than there was from the just leaving people alone. The four-year risk of stroke or death was 4.5% for carotid stenting, 2.7% for endarterectomy. The authors cited Medicare data showing that risks are even higher in the general population. The Medicare data showed one-year stroke or death rate of 16.7% for stenting and 11% for endarterectomy. In response to this and other data, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recommends against screening asymptomatic patients and wrote, and this is a quote from their website, the USPSTF concludes with moderate certainty that the harms of screening for asymptomatic carotid artery stenosis outweigh the benefits. Well, we're just not making much progress in stopping the unnecessary testing. Spence says, our friend Dr. Spence, that carotid stenting in asymptomatic patients is worse than unethical, but that, quote, it is hard to convince somebody of something when their livelihood depends on not believing it. And boy, isn't that the truth in medicine. He adds that in the United States, 90% of, car of carotid interventional procedures are performed on asymptomatic patients who would have a lower risk of stroke and death if we just left them alone. The overuse of carotid imaging and procedures supports my advice for asymptomatic patients in general, or people in general, to avoid interaction with doctors. If you put yourself in the care of a bunch of doctors' hands and say, listen, just start testing this body until you find something wrong, inevitably something will be found. But the question is whether or not you benefit from knowing about it. A doctor's offices are good places for sick people, but not necessarily for the healthy. I've always likened what goes on in doctor's offices today to what would happen if we treated our houses this way. Okay, so here's what I mean. Let's say tomorrow morning I put a posting on Facebook that at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning I want every contractor in Franklin County who does any kind of work on residential structures to show up at my house. I live in a two-story, fairly sizable home, and what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top of the house, we're going to inspect every square inch with plumbers and electricians and drywall people and basement people and any kind of contractor you can imagine, dig up something that needs to be fixed, and I will pay you whatever you, and better yet, my insurance company will pay you whatever you ask to fix it. Well, that's what's going, can you imagine? We'd be under construction at my house until I was 150 years old, right? Well, this is what we're doing with our bodies. Poke, prod, image, look for stuff that's wrong. When you find something, my insurance company will pay you whatever you ask to fix it. It's a bad idea, all right? So this is just one example. 
lots of information in the Health Brace Library. Those of you who are subscribers about so much of the rest of the stuff we do in medicine, that's such a bad idea. A lot of this testing comes under the same category. So um, make informed choices. That's the bottom line. All right, well, that's all for today and for the week. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I will be back to you on uh, next week with more news.